Hi everyone. Good morning. So today I'm going to show uh, another. So basically, what is I wanted to uh, to use narcissist and I wanted to understand how it is working. And basically, today what I want is uh, I want to show if we want to build an app using now assist capabilities only, how it will work and um, um, whether it will be fast or not. So as a as a developer, I want to know that if uh, NASA's creator skill uh, actually works or not. Okay, so this video we are going live uh, coding and we'll check that whether NASA's creator is good enough or not. Okay, so uh, first thing, Narcissus creator is uh, skill is not available on PDI. So what I've done is I have uh, uh, activated a, I'm using a lab instance. So if I will go back here, you will see now learning uh, lab instance, okay? Uh, next thing that I wanted to show is, uh, so how you can get it? So just log in at, uh, in your now learning platform and uh, and launch this course now assist for creator implementation bootcamp on demand course once you do that they will give you an option to uh, either open an uh, open my instance or wake up my instance so either way uh, you can get this okay so once you open this uh, now assist creator is always uh, already available to you uh, it means in this instance what you have to do is uh, if i go back this. Uh, so even if you are admin, this is not uh, means this uh, creator is not available. Uh, so uh, so you still have to use add a role to yourself or the user that you want to use uh, creator workspace. Just add narcissist dot creator and panel user and whatever now uh, narcissist related roles are. Just add those. Only creator is what is needed to enable um, creator skill for your user. Okay, so that's how you you should do it. Okay, now uh, moving ahead, let's just create the app. So app is very simple that I want to create. So I have create a means open this uh, new New York salon and uh, I called it now salon. And uh, if uh, I've created a form and I want user to, once they submit the form, uh, so it will be a appointment form. Uh, so if they want to sub like, uh, get an appointment to this now salon, which is very busy all the time. And uh, so you should just submit a form, provide me the date, what I will do means what system should do is first on the basis of your location. So I have a franchisee of the salon, uh, not only in New York, but in many other uh, like uh, states. So franchisee of the salon. And so but on the basis of your location, it will tell which, uh, Salon, you have to go to. Second, uh, on the basis of different uh, appointments, it will be able to give uh, that uh, what is the like, uh, it will be able to finalize the date and time of your appointment. Okay. So these two things I want the workflow should uh, do and then send an approval to the owner, uh, which is me. And once I approve it, then send a notification SMS to the user that your appointment is successful. Okay. So yeah, it's very simple, um, like workflow. So let's just see, I've already created few of the things because I don't want to like take up so much of your time. So first thing is form. So let's just, uh, this book an appointment, as you can see in the form, I have tried a few things. That's why you were able to see few values before. But if you reload the form, you see that name field is empty and the preferred date of appointment is also empty. But I don't want user to fill anything. Means they just have to submit it. So a name should populate based on my user profile and the date of appointment should be today's date. So I want these things to populate. Now, what I will do, uh, I need a client script 
to populate these values. Okay. So let me just write a client script and uh, uh, and use uh, NOS's creator skill to do that. Okay. So let's just go ahead and uh, okay. So this is a client script which I've already you know created. Tried few things just to make sure that I'm not making fun of uh, myself in front of everyone. <laughs> so yeah. So first thing is that you will notice over here is this these two stars. So powered by analysis for code generation. These two stars are uh, indicates that uh, your script is uh, means capable of code generation. If these two stars are not there, then there is some issue with uh, your profile or something or your instance. Um, like um, I would say just add the role and log out and log in. That worked for me. Otherwise, just get a new instance or something. Okay. Uh, I'm talking about the lab instance. Let's just create this first. So uh, what you have to do is very simple. Uh, just comment whatever you need. So I want to populate you name is my, the uh, name of the, my field with the logged in user. Okay. Um, user. Okay. So, and I will do command enter to run the code generation. Okay. So it was able to get you name with username. So see, okay, this is wrong because it should not use the username uh, because you name is a reference field, which I didn't tell. So let's say uh, populate you name field with a logged in user ID. Okay. Let's just see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. User ID is perfect. So what I will do, I will use tab to accept. Now, uh, onload function is already there. So what I'll do is just remove this and remove that. This is, let's just save it and check if the low, if the user ID is uh, getting populated or not. Yeah. Reload the page. And yes, user ID is getting populated. So what it took um, two minutes to do that. Okay, so that is good. I want uh, him to be present in New York. Um, you will see why. Okay. Um, so, okay, it cannot be that. That's that's right. Uh, somebody else. So let's just uh, okay. So I also want uh, the default date which should appear over here is uh, current date. Okay. So let's just go ahead and write that as a prompt. So. Uh, Okay, populate today's date on you prefer date. You prefer date is the name of the field that I'm using on my farm. Okay, um, today's date. Yeah. So let's see. Oh shit. Uh, I have to call and enter. I just entered. So that's it. Okay. Um, G user dot today. Okay, so this is wrong. Um, G user dot today. I'm not exactly sure if there is a um. Let's just use it. I'm not going to use anything from my side. Okay, I'm like ninety percent sure there is nothing like G user dot today. But let's just see. Maybe it is there. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Like G user and object of user and then using this. Okay, so I would uh, update the prompt to populate uh, current date on you uh, field on the form using JavaScript. Maybe that will help. Uh, so sometimes uh, providing the API that you want to e it to use uh, is a good idea. So, okay, so what it has done, uh, let's just check it, okay. 
Okay, so open. So it has uh, JavaScript. Yeah, it is using JavaScript date uh, uh, library. Then today date uh, month. So it has used uh, got the date month and year, and then it formatted it in a proper manner. Uh, I'm just missing these things, and then it is uh, updating the value. This is pretty good. This is I love it. Um, so it is uh, not only it is uh, getting the date, but it is also formatting it in a proper manner uh, because otherwise uh, system will not be able to take it. So it understands what service now wants. Still hallucinating a little bit, but I believe this will work. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh yeah, bingo. So we got the correct user um, data. Next is, um, so once we have these things, let's just, uh, what I want to do is I want to impersonate another user who is Abraham Lincoln. Why? Because I want to submit the form uh, based on Abraham Lincoln. But uh, before that, uh, I don't want to submit it. Let's just first create the flow because submission will not do anything. Okay, so the first thing in the flow that I want is, so booking an appointment form is ready. Uh, we have the dates and all that we are taking from the user. Now what I want is first, I want to check the user's location and locate it with the um, map it with the location of the salon so as you can see i have added in the location table three salons location one is in texas california new york so if the user is in uh, so abraham lincoln uh, is in new york then uh, he should get uh, this salon as a location for their apartment an appointment date should be, so I don't have any other values, so appointment date will be the same thing. Same or some other date. But uh, let's just create the flow first. Okay, so yeah, as you can see, I've tried many, many times. Um, flow, uh, salon, appointment, appointment, flow. Uh, additional properties uh, run as a system user. Amazon, these things are fine. So, uh, main thing that I want to do is uh, what you'd like to do. Yeah. So, what I want to do is uh, once uh, uh, so let's just open the table. So on creation of a record on this table. So if I open the, what's the name of the table? Yeah. Because if I give the name of the table, then it will be able to understand it clearly, right? So in the trigger condition. So let's just, uh, Hello, should trigger on the creation of a record on table. Table. Hello, should trigger on creation of a record on a table. Okay, so this is the first thing. Second, uh, it should locate the user location. It should map map the salon location. Map the salon location based on you your you name you underscore name fields user location 
um, and then update the record with the, the salon location. Uh, next thing is uh, check the fill the appointment, update the appointment, date the appointment date in the location in the table to next day. I, I just want to make sure it's uh, doing at least the simple thing first. Um, and then send an approval to the user able tutor and if the approval is approved send a sms notification to user so this is what I want. Uh, I've stated everything that I wanted from this uh, flow. Uh, let's see what uh, how it will get it. Okay. Code generation was fast, uh, and uh, it uh, took what uh, two, three, in less than one second. Even this one, less than one second. So. Let's see what is done. Uh, first thing, it was able to understand uh, uh, the, the trigger. Trigger is perfectly fine. Uh, very good. Next, go to the lookup records. So lookup records, uh, yeah, I wanted to look up uh, the location. So it is lookup record, not look. Uh, lookup records. So users location and map it to the location table. But um, it has you did used uh, lookup record, but not uh, doing the same thing that I wanted. Then what it is doing, it is checking um, if condition. So it has added the architecture of the flow, as you can see, uh, what it wants me to do. Uh, and it was pretty much same. It has added to update record because I want to update the location of the uh, location of the uh, salon. And next thing I want to update is um, uh, first thing was the location. Next thing was the apartment date. So it has doing this. It is doing that. Uh, then it is sending notification. Uh, but I mentioned it should uh, do uh, send SMS. I tried the same thing earlier as well, where it did add a similar kind of architecture as you can see, but uh, with uh, sending SMS uh, there, and but approval, approval was not there. Um, approval is not there. Maybe because I'm using approval to be, you know, um, uh, like, uh, I'm sending it to the hard-coded user. Ideally, the flow should look like, I've created a flow by myself. Uh, it should look like this. So first thing is, uh, well, this trigger was completely right. And look, look up location records. So basically what I wanted was, I wanted to check if the name of the location is, um, check up the user's location and if there is any location associated with the same location. Then, uh, update the same whatever is present over there in the location table. So users location cafe should be updated in the uh, location field of the apartment. And then update the uh, record with the appointment date. I've hard coded it because I don't have any records. And then ask for approval. Then send an SMS if it is approved. So ideally it should look like this, but uh, Mm, well, it's not far off, I would say. It's still giving me architecture of what I wanted. Uh, if I'll say, let's just create another flow. So, and uh, I, I just wanted to use the flow that uh, they are giving as an example from. So create a silly flow that waits for 50% of the SLA to complete, then sends a notification. Next wait for 70% of the SLA. 
Uh, then said, okay, so this is a reminder application. Uh, this is very, very good. Um, we often use this. I've come across uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, like uh, what uh, use case a lot. So flow design sample. Let's just add in build. Basically, what I want to check is uh, how well it is creating this uh, means. Is it like uh, when the lookup records, all those actions are getting created? Is it like full filling all those values or not? Okay, so I still had asked, that is good. Wait for until percentage. See, so, okay. Okay, I understood now. So basically the flow designer means until this lab instance, I'm not talking about the Xanadu because I've not used Xanadu. Um, so until that it is providing the actions so it is creating a architecture of all the actions that are going to be used and but it is not filling the details which is uh, actually good because uh, uh, why i would say uh, let me tell you an example like for, if i if you would have created the lookup records it wouldn't have checked for like users location is New York and in the location table there can be many city which is in New York so how it will filter those values uh, I had to add that name contains this uh, city should be this then it was able to understand okay yeah these are the local records that I'm looking for and system in the prompt itself I'm not given all those things and system will also not be able to like go into these integrate details which is totally fine for me at least architecture is giving me some productivity you know so uh, going back to here this looks fine overall i think this is working very well uh, i love the creator skills means especially the uh, coding skills because it was able to not only means understand what works in service now and uh, then provide that kind of information because if you uh, like populate current date uh, if i'll just write that populate current date uh, in service now then uh, i may get in open ai i may get a lot of different answers and may that may not work in service now I have already done that, so I know I know. And if there is a model which is trained on ServiceNow um, coding and ServiceNow code, that is amazing. So one more thing that I liked here is so, so as you can see over here, lookup records, right? So in the lookup records, if I search for this, you see added. It, it is providing me the recommendations. Now, if you closely look at the recommendations, it is providing for each because lookup record, once you have the lookup records, it understands that to use the values from the lookup record action, you have to use for each. And that's why it is recommending that. So recommendation and the flow designer works hand in hand. Once I'll create the for each, it will create a skeleton of it. And I think this is what is happening over there as well. It will give you the uh, list of all the actions that are going to, that you you will use, uh, you should, uh, you will use to create that flow. It will not fill in the details, which is at the initial level, I loved it. Uh, one thing I also wanted to show, um, yeah, if we want to show the flow, let's just means for the sake because I said that I'm going to create it. So let's just uh, impersonate uh, Lincoln and uh, because one flow is already running. So and if I some reload the page, everything is already filled. Submit it. Yeah, because this guy doesn't have like, you know, uh, access to that record. That's fine. Just fine. An impersonation. 
and go back to Salon. I have it. Salon. Let's come here. There is another record. Um, uh, which one is uh, this one is just now? Let's just open it. So, yeah, approval is requested and uh, preferred date, abandonment date, everything is fixed. Uh, if I'll, yeah, I think I must have gotten approval. Mm, approval. My approval is. So then it will approve that account. Yeah, so it's not perfect, but it's pretty fine. Uh, so, yeah, one thing I wanted to share was uh, it is approved, uh, was the model card. Now, what ServiceNow has done is uh, ServiceNow has used an open source to, to generate this code. Uh, sometimes we need to understand that uh, what is uh, happening, how, how which model it, uh, ServiceNow is using to generate these codes, which is uh, which ServiceNow is calling LLM models and all, uh, just to understand how well they perform from where they are getting the data. So uh, this, uh, this model is actually, so this LLM model card, you can just search with ServiceNow LLM text to code model card. This model card provides all the information related to the model. Uh, that is, so it is kind of a responsible AI because we need to understand from where this uh, this model has been you know, created and all, uh, how it got the data. So uh, this model is called uh, Star Coder. Star Coder is actually a very good model. So if I come here, I'll just open star coder. Uh, it is deployed on Hugging Face here. Uh, big code project, so star coder model family. And this, uh, so what ServiceNow has done on the basis on this star coder large language model, they have fine tuned this model. So model is fine tuned version of a model on a star coder family and uh, fine-tuned with uh, all the code that is and uh, best practices that ServiceNow creates. So that's why it is even better than OpenAI's latest models because it understands uh, ServiceNow better than uh, any other model in the, in the market, okay? So that's why it is able to understand that uh, which code works in ServiceNow, you don't have to provide that information. You know the, those things. So yeah. Um. So yeah, that is all for today. Uh, do let me know your impressions, and if you want me to check any other functionalities of any other uh, now assist uh, skill, um, yeah, I'm happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much.